Welcome! Today, we're looking at orbital diagrams, a key tool for understanding atomic structure. By the end, you'll know exactly how to draw them step by step, and we'll tackle some practice problems together. Let's get started! What is an orbital diagram? An orbital diagram is a visual tool that shows us how electrons are organized within an atom's orbitals. In these diagrams, each box represents an orbital, essentially a region where we're most likely to find an electron. Within each box, electrons are shown as arrows. An upward arrow represents an electron with spin up, while a downward arrow represents an electron with spin down. Each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, but they must have opposite spins. That's why, in orbital diagrams, you'll typically see no more than two arrows in each box. These boxes help simplify the complex shapes of orbitals, allowing us to focus on electron arrangement and spin without needing to picture the actual three-dimensional shapes. Now, let's talk about why different orbitals are represented by different numbers of boxes. Each type of orbital has a unique shape and specific orientations in space. S orbitals, for instance, have a spherical shape and only one possible orientation. So in orbital diagrams, they're represented by a single box. P orbitals have a distinctive dumbbell shape and can align along the X, Y, and Z axes. Since they have three possible orientations, they're represented by three boxes in orbital diagrams. D orbitals have more complex shapes and can align in five different orientations. That's why, in orbital diagrams, they're represented by five boxes. F orbitals have seven possible orientations, which is why they're represented by seven boxes in orbital diagrams. Now, let's go through a few examples together to see how this works in practice. Let's start with nitrogen. Nitrogen has an atomic number of seven, which means it has seven electrons. To draw its orbital diagram, the first thing we need to do is figure out its electron configuration. If you're not sure about electron configurations, don't worry. We've already covered that in a separate video, so feel free to check it out. For nitrogen, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. This tells us exactly how the seven electrons are distributed across the orbitals. Now, let's break this down and turn it into an orbital diagram. First, let's draw the orbitals in order of increasing energy. In the first energy level, we have 1s orbital, so we draw a single box labeled 1s. In the second energy level, we have both an s orbital and a set of 3p orbitals, so we'll draw one box for 2s and three boxes for 2p. Now, according to the electron configuration, the first two electrons go into the 1s orbital. We place two arrows in the 1s box, one pointing up and one pointing down. These arrows represent the two electrons in the 1s orbital, each with opposite spins. Next up is the 2s orbital, which holds two electrons, as shown by 2s2. We'll place one up arrow and one down arrow in the 2s box to fill it. Finally, we come to the 2p3 electrons. This means there are three electrons in the 2p orbitals. According to Hund's rule, each of the three 2p orbitals gets one electron first. No pairing yet. This minimizes electron repulsion and makes the atom more stable. So, we'll add one up arrow to each of the three 2p boxes. And that's it. Our final orbital diagram for nitrogen looks like this. Let's move on to our second example. Drawing the orbital diagram for iron. Iron has an atomic number of 26, which means it has 26 electrons to arrange in its orbitals. To start, we need to identify the electron configuration of iron. For iron, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 
4S2 3D6. Now, we'll draw the orbitals in increasing energy. Just like we did with nitrogen, we'll start by drawing the boxes. The 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s orbitals are represented by single boxes. The 2p and 3p orbitals are represented by three boxes each, as each p sublevel has three orbitals. The 3d orbital is represented by five boxes since the d sublevel has five orbitals. The 1s2 orbital gets two electrons, one up arrow, and one down arrow. The 2s2 orbital gets two electrons, one up arrow and one down arrow. The 2p6 orbital gets six electrons in total, filling all three 2p orbitals with two electrons each, one up arrow and one down arrow in each box. The 3s2 orbital gets two electrons, one up and one down. The 3p6 orbital gets six electrons, filling all three 3p orbitals. The 4s2 orbital gets two electrons, one up and one down. Now, we move to the 3d6 orbital. According to Hund's rule, each of the five 3d orbitals will get one electron before any pairing occurs. So, place one up arrow in each of the five 3d boxes. After all five 3d orbitals have one electron each, we go back and pair up electrons to fill the orbitals. Since iron has six electrons in the 3d sublevel, we add one more down arrow to the first orbital. Now that you have a solid understanding of how to draw orbital diagrams, it's time to put it into practice. I've prepared a few extra problems to help you reinforce what you've learned. Give them a try, and don't worry if you get stuck. That's part of the learning process. And if you have any questions along the way, just drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to help you out. Keep practicing, and before you know it, drawing orbital diagrams will feel like second nature. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.